it, I, th- I can't remember what the li- the line that the guy was actually wearing the Darth Vader suit said, uh, but it wasn't "I'm your dad." So it was, <laughs> "I'm the pap, <laughs> Hey, boy, I'm your pops. I'm your daddy. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> Let me spank you. Wait, what? Weird. Hey, boy, you do your daggum homework. <laughs> You think you can just run around space all day long? No, no. responsibilities? <laughs> no, I am your father. Now get inside <laughs> and do your homework right now. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Twerk Ethics Show. If you are enjoying this and you want to know how you can support us, Patreon is the best way. Absolutely. You agree? Giving online is the best thing, and it's the easiest way possible. And it's almost five bucks. Almost five bucks. <laughs> it's only five bucks. It's only five bucks, which is almost free. Yeah, that is almost free. So again, that's patreon.com slash twerk ethic podcast. Thank you. Do it. So, Nathan, so good to see you. How are you doing? Let the people know. <laughs> Well, okay. Um, those watching, you know exactly what just happened. Uh, and those listening, you know partially what just happened. Mm. Uh, Nathan has a Star Wars shirt on. A very cool Star Wars shirt on, if I must say so myself. From Target. From Target? Yep. Old school. They have some, or they at least used to have some good shirts. Yeah, I haven't been there in a while. Yeah. But they had, they had good ones. Yeah. But you have the cool... Uh, Star Wars shirt that's got the yellow writing, almost like it's the credits. It's Yeah, it's the yellow uh, font. Yeah. The OG. And uh, you just hit me with Chewbacca, <laughs> and I was not ready for it. <laughs> you want me to hit me? That's all, oh, folks. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you want me to hit you with something else? Yeah, let's see. Like, Can you do Darth Vader? Just the breathing. You know what else that is an impression of? Huh? Me playing tennis on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I played tennis for like 45 minutes, and I was so out of breath. It's grueling, man. And I, when I got done, Sarah Carter was like, how you feel? And I was like, I can't do it like you did it. But. Don't talk to me. Um, Try to catch my breath. Dude, what's funny is we tried to go early. By the way, obviously you need to come play tennis with us because you've been talking about this forever. I have. Um, I have my own racket and everything. What kind do you have? Ready to go. I've got Roger Federer's racket. Not his, but his say, pictures You should get on that it. back to him. <laughs> his picture's on it, so I bought I bought that racket. What's does it, is it a brand? Yeah, it's a brand, and I can't remember the name of it. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Um, do you have your own like uh, case for it? No, I don't have one yet. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. But I do want. I do want one. I've been looking on Amazon for one because I have a red and white racket, and obviously I want a red case for it. Yeah. Well, so we went. Early Sunday to play. Yeah. And uh, I have no other way to say it. It was me, and then it was a bunch of baby boomers, uh, which I don't have a problem with baby boomers. The baby boomers listening, don't worry about that. Yeah. But these baby boomers, I did. Settle down. They were the ones that, uh, I don't even know how really to describe it, but it was the men just peacocking. (laughs) You know, they're yeah. just out there. Oh, come on, come on, hit it harder, man! Oh, and no. they're like, and I'm like, okay, all right. So me and my wife have no idea what we're doing. Yeah, this is like my third time ever uh, playing tennis, right? And mind you, I'm athletic, so I'm getting good fairly yeah. quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these guys are just being the most obnoxious. I can't even describe it. And yeah. they're they're peacocking and you know yeah. 
trying to show off and it's mm-hmm. like dude no one cares right like you're you're yeah. in our neighborhood yeah tennis thing whatever big deal but we're going to try and go earlier now on Sunday so we avoid them keywords neighborhood tennis yes this is not the tpa or whatever it is <laughs> pro tennis the hamilton mill PTA. open um <laughs> the Hamilton Mill Open, <laughs> but I did. It is huge. It is fun. And oh I, yeah! And like I said, I, am, I love it. I am getting better. I think I am. I'm. I'm best so far. I'm pretty good at serving. Yeah, I've got that down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm pretty good at the forehand. Right. The backhand. I'm working on that one. Yeah, my backhand needs a little work. But I. Sure. But I do. I am pretty good at the backhand, like ping pong. Mm. So, and I don't mean ping pong. I mean, so I mean tennis. But what I mean is, like, when you hit it and you kind of go like down like that and put a spin on it. Oh yeah, similar to what you do with ping pong. Yeah, I'm, I can do that with tennis really well. Oh, okay, I think the backhand that I don't understand and I'm not sure I'm ever going oh, to. So you're slicing with the backhand. Slicing. Okay, I got that nailed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the two handed. You know, oh yeah, proper backhand. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm ever going to do that. Right, but the forehand, I kind of got it. You know, the whole like follow through and then point the elbow. Yeah. Um, but again, I've only played like three times. Never knew about the elbow thing. Well, YouTube is pretty helpful. You True. Know, I only watched like a couple minute video because, like I said, I've rarely played, and the yeah. only time I've played before now, I'm pretty sure was with Jonathan Nice. In Waycross, so oh, okay. that almost doesn't count because that was forever ago. <laughs> True. Um, so I play with these. Yeah, but it's been a couple years though. Yeah, but yeah, and I, you know, your baseball skills, I can, I can confirm, do not transfer. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, but your no, athletic skills do. Sure. Like I, I just understand, and I get, I get, catch on the sports like really, really fast. Yeah. Um, it just makes sense to me. Yeah. You know? But tennis is, tennis is different than most things I've played. I well, I mean, tennis and golf, I don't know. They're similar in the sense of like they both. You have to have a certain swing. Yeah. And you have to have the right form. Yeah. You know. I was never like great at a sport. I was okay at basketball, but. I was always average at every sport, so I can I could learn it, but I can only go so far with it. So, but like I wasn't like I didn't suck at all the sports. Yeah, that's for sure. But I was like I was pretty decent. Yeah. Um, but you know, but I was never like great at a certain thing. Sure. You know, so only band. Oh, yeah, you're on marching season. That worked out good for you, though. Which, speaking of, I lost a ton of weight doing that stuff. Man. Marching band? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. Because we go to camp in, like, the middle of the summer, like, beginning of August, you know, and it's like, and then we stay, you know, out all day from sunup to sundown. Right. Because we're out in the country, and we didn't have any lights out in the field. (laughs) (laughs) So, but, yeah, it was was pretty grueling, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But do you think it's the band that led you to Star Wars? Because like, isn't aren't oh band, I was already a Star Wars fan. okay, but aren't band people like the people in yeah. life that are that tend to be a little more? I, I wouldn't use the word nerd because nerd I, I think is different in high school. Yeah, what I is. mean is like the people in band end up being adult nerds. Yeah, or am I way off? No, no, no. You're right. Okay, absolutely. Because I think, I mean, because I grew up with music in the house, so I was naturally drawn to it mm-hmm. uh, at the beginning. Because my grandpa was a big Beethoven, Bach, you know, like he played pipe organ, so he was into a lot of orchestration pieces or whatever. So that kind of got me what hooked onto that, and and so then I started watching uh, those movies, and the, I think the. The music alone for Star Wars made it famous. So, yeah, it's incredible. I mean, it's a, it's. I mean, it's a. Don't get me wrong; it's a good story, but it, especially in those times, like in 1977, where, where you 
think of a space movie, you think of like just sound effects for music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then John Williams is like, that's cool, but here is the London Symphony Orchestra for you. Yeah. Not bad players. Yeah. Just saying. Um, and the special effects for that time. <laughs> right. Kind of ridiculous. So it was a game changer in the you know late 70s. And and uh, and you start, start the credits out with this, the logo, and then you hear that big Huge. concert B-flat. It's epic. Oh, so So good. here's the thing, though. I, I don't know that Star Wars is nerdy anymore. It's not. You know, and I the reason I say that is I do remember as a kid, if you were into it, especially if you're into Star Trek, you yeah. were like, you well, Star Trek, you, you were a super nerd. Yeah. If you were into Star Trek. You were a Trekkie. But Star sure. Wars, even Star Wars, you were still like kind of nerdy. It oh, wasn't yeah. cool. Oh, dude. And now Absolutely. something about it, Star Wars, maybe because Disney took it over. I don't know. But I feel like it's just not, it's not a, it's not a, a nerdy thing. Because to too many people like it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and you said the story, right? I think the story can be summed up as it's an, it's good versus evil. Oh, yeah. And good will always win. Yeah. You know, exactly. And that's like, Everybody loves that story. Yeah. And Star Wars is probably the one of the better portrayals of this land of good and land of evil and sure. good always prevails. Yeah. You know? And then when, like, spoiler alert, when uh, Darth Vader tells Luke that that he's his father. I didn't know that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Revealed in 1980, yeah. by the way. I did, I did know that. Yeah, you did know that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, nobody saw it coming. Nobody. Wow. Like they had, um, they had done like the the line like while filming it. They didn't say the actual line that's in the movie. So, so it would be equivalent to me telling you I'm your father, right? That's how shocking it was. <laughs> It's an episode of <laughs> Music Twerk fan. Ethic Mari. Right. But uh Is that isn't it Mari? Mari whatever his name is, Povich. Mari Povich? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where you're the you're the dad. You're the dad. <laughs> so Twerk Ethic. You are the father. <laughs> oh, I told you. <laughs> so twerk <laughs> <laughs> I love how I was trying to like intersect and you just right. kept on this so, <laughs> so good. I had to finish my more my so more twerk quote. ethic audience. Twerkers, if you will. Yeah. Which is the name you coined. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> we're here to tell you I am not the father of Nathan. Right. So So rejoice. But it would be that shocking <laughs> continue with right. your, with your Star Wars history. Exactly. So it was like so it, I, th- I can't remember what the li- the line that the guy was actually wearing the Darth Vader suit said, uh, but it wasn't "I'm your dad," so it was <laughs> <laughs> "I'm the family." <laughs> hey, boy, I'm your pops. I'm your daddy. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> Let me spank you. Wait, what? That's weird. Hey, boy, you do your dad and homework. <laughs> You think you can just run around space all day long? No, no. responsibilities? <laughs> no, I am your father. Now get inside <laughs> and do your homework right now. Oh, my gosh. Um, I am your father, and your mother has sentenced me to whip you for no reason. I don't know what the reason is, <laughs> but I am your father. I'm here to whip you. Yeah. But it was so hidden. Yes. That Harrison Ford, Mr. Han Solo himself, didn't know until the preview. He was like, because <laughs> he cornered Mark Hamill, he was like, why didn't you tell me that? <laughs> he was That's all mad insane. at him. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It reminds me of like, like nobody told him. <laughs> like the only people that are really good at that anymore is, is like Apple. 
Like they have like, Mm -hmm. I watched this video the other day. They have like this insane uh, system to keep things secretive because it's so easy for something to leak or whatever. Sure, yeah. And even with them, I was like, that's kind of insane. Yeah. That they that no one like people that work at Apple have no freaking idea. Yeah. What's about to release. Right. And I'm like, how fun is that? Especially if it's yeah. something like Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Of like you are in the movie. Yeah. And you don't know and you don't know this. Yeah. And that happens a lot still to this day, like the new Star Wars movies. They're that's just so like, cool, man. Oh. I just think that's really? so cool. Yeah. It keeps you on the edge, you man. Well, you know, I, I don't really love the idea of leaks. No. You know, and they're like, no, hey, yeah. we, we have leaks of the new iPhone and the new Samsung. Right. It's like, I, what, I, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that ruins the launch. Like, there's a new series out for Star Wars called The Bad Batch, and they have leaks about the upcoming episode. I was like, I don't want to I want to read or watch that. I want to find out when the episode comes out. Mm-hmm. It's like, don't tell me. Yeah. So we, we've, we're trying now to stop watching movie previews. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, there's something you just have to, to know if you're even interested. Right. But if someone tells you. Like a teaser. If someone, multiple people have recommended a movie and you've decided, okay, I got to watch that. Yeah. Well, there's no point in watching the trailer at that point. No. Because you already know you want to watch it based on what your friends have told you. Yeah. And so I've been trying not to watch the movie trailers, and it makes it so much better. Because it's like yeah. the trailer, at least you know, if you're midway through the movie and you don't, you haven't seen that part in the trailer yet, well, yeah. you know that's coming right at some point. Yep. And mm-hmm. So that's really cool <clears throat> yeah. that they didn't know. Yeah. Absolutely. That's like that's that actually makes me respect it even more. Yeah. But you're the one that 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 got me into Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And of and course I had I had <laughs> seen it on TV. Yeah. But I never chose to watch it. I right. obviously knew who I mean, you're you're crazy if you don't know who the characters were. Right. Exactly. I mean, I knew who Vader was and C three PO and R two D two and Yeah. Like I I knew all And that's this. why it's not nerdy anymore because everybody yeah. knows about it. And then you were like, dude, let me take you on the journey. Yeah. And, uh, which was a mistake at first. <laughs> yeah. Cause you showed me the, which one? Episode one, the Phantom Menace. Yes. Which was the prequels to the originals. But in your defense, I think the reason you did is because they put it, it was, they were currently ha- uh, putting them in theaters. Yeah. And yep. you were like, well, this is a good idea. And I think we saw it in IMAX. Yeah. Which was like, yeah, we got to go see him now Yeah, in IMAX. Well, the thing about it is I don't love fantasy stuff. Right. I, I like sci-fi. Yeah. But I don't like fant- Like, I don't like the Lord of the Rings, that right. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so when I saw the episode one, I was like, this ain't for me. It's just kind of boring. Yeah. But then you, oh, made, it was super boring. you made me watch uh, episode four uh-huh. and five. Right. And I was like, now this is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is mm-hmm. this is actually pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm still not a Star Wars, like, fan. Right. You are. Yeah. I'm more so, like, I respect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I For loved sure. those two movies. And the first one that they came back out with. Uh, is it the Force, Force Awakens? Force Awakens. Yeah, because I mean, part of it is I think I just like that movie, but another part is uh, when Sarah Carter and I decided to try again in terms of our second date, we broke up, right? And we wanted to go out again. Yeah, I took her to the drive-in in Atlanta, nice, and we watched uh, Star Wars. Yeah. And so there's a little bit of sentimental stuff there for me. Sure. Where I'll always have that, that movie's always going to have like a, a nice spot yeah. in my heart. Yeah. But I really liked that movie like a lot. Oh, um, yeah. And I, and the movie was well done. The movies after that, what was the one after that? Um, um, Last Jedi. Was that the one? Um, what was the one where they're in the woods for forever and they're sword fighting? 
or in the uh, woods, uh, like Kylo Ren and the girl. Oh yeah, that was the first one, or the that was the Force Awakens. Oh what really? Yeah, that was the end of that movie. Okay, or towards the end of it. The Last Jedi was maybe I haven't seen the Last Jedi. No, you saw it with us. Okay, um, it was um, when Luke was on. She was on the island with Luke, and he was training her. Oh, yeah, yeah, got it. So, um, yeah, which by popular demand is not a good movie, but Rotten Tomatoes gave it a ninety-one. Wow, <laughs> and I don't, I don't hate it. I, yeah. I actually liked it yeah. a lot. There's some fans that will disagree with you. Um, now there was like no overall, the movie was was good, but there were certain parts where it's just like. Okay, come on. Yeah. You're stalling here. But, you know. I feel like the ones that they did that were like, you know how they did? They did like The Force Awakens, and then they did like a another movie in between. But it yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't the Skywars, or Skywalker story. Yeah. I feel like I personally like the Skywalker series or whatever that sure. is. It just feels. I like the blockbuster notion of those movies <laughs> yeah like true. it's just like it, i don't know it's just a summer feels like a summer blockbuster even though force awakens came out in december i think but it did uh, it feels like that summer blockbuster and now did you see rogue one that's the one that i didn't see oh uh, okay you would like that one okay rogue one is like set up right before episode four okay. so when, like so when rogue one ends it's like 10 minutes before episode four. Oh, wow. Okay. If you go on YouTube, people have like uh, stitched them together. Yeah. And it's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It looks exactly like. So, but so it's I feel cool. like our audience is probably made up of three categories. Yeah. Um, a you. Yeah. Which is yay. Star Wars. You know, give me everything you got. I'm going to watch every movie that comes out. True. Then there's a respect for Star Wars. I might see the movie in theaters. Yeah. Might see it not in theaters yeah. someday down the road. Yeah. Then there's the, I've never watched a Star Wars movie in my life. I'm not going to start now, mm. but I don't really, I don't necessarily have anything against it. Right. That's like a Bobby Dobbins. Oh, yeah. He's never seen He's any never Star seen Wars. Movie. Yeah. But I've never heard him like diss Star Wars. No, and I think I'm going to get him into it. Okay, Bobby, you heard it here first. So I said yep. three people. Then there's also four people. So the fourth one would be I hate Star Wars so much I'm going to kill it. Right. And uh, I haven't met many of those. No, there, a lot of those people don't exist. So they do usually, exist, but not a lot. It's usually your fanboys, which you are. Then it's your. I think it's cool, and I respect it. But but I'm not going to engage as much. Right. That's me. Yeah. Then there's your bobbies of I just I never took the time to get into it. Yeah. But I have no problem with it. That's yeah. the majority of the population. Sure. You know. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So. And I think. Uh, but the more I've gotten into it, like the more stuff I, I get to watch because there's the Mandalorian, which you know is a an, an whole different story. Now I did start watching that and I liked it. Yeah, yeah. The Mandalorian is awesome. That was cool. And uh, I like any show or movie. Yeah, where the main character, male or female, yeah, is just a badass. Right. Intellectually. Yeah. Physically, mm -hmm. like it, when I say physically, I mean like fighting everybody. Yeah. Or like with weapons, mm -hmm. or maybe they're. You know, some sort of alpha presence, like they're the smartest person in the whole world. Right. You don't yeah. cross them. Always one step ahead. Yeah. And yeah. I think maybe it's because, you know, we, it's kind of like the James Bond effect. Yeah. It's like people, a lot of times, I think people are confused of like, um, James Bond is, is what all the girls want. And it's like, no, you got it wrong. All the dudes, want to be James Bond. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? It's very true. Like, it's kind of comical Yeah, how they've done these movies because it's yeah. really made for, for men. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the men want to have a $10,000 suit 
drive an Aston Martin, you know, beat up anybody who tries, get all the women. It's, yeah. it's a it's a like male fantasy. Oh, absolutely. More than anything. Yeah. And so I think those movies, yeah. James Bond is a perfect one. Yeah. But those movies where it's like the main character is just you better not cross him. Uh-huh. You know. Oh yeah. And I think they're I think they're doing a better job with the with the the female stuff too. Like there's that movie Anna and oh yeah some things where like the like the woman is being like a John Wick. Right. And just whipping everybody. And yeah. I'm like, come on. Wait, who's an Anna? More of this. I I don't remember. Oh, I'm thinking of uh Ava. Ava, same thing. Yeah. It's kinda like yeah. the same she's, thing. Yeah, she was like that. Um where she's the spy. Uh, what's her name? Shoot, I can't remember her name. Yeah, she's a spy. Yeah, undercover and just crushes and everybody. Just <laughs> very impressive. I will watch that same plot over and over. Jessica Chastain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch that same plot over and over and over and over and over. Yeah, you know. Oh, dude, and, and don't even, don't even get me started on vengeance movies. It's oh. like. Oh, you killed his wife and his kids, and he's gonna he's gonna basically search the world and find you and kill you. Yeah, I want to watch it. Yeah, I don't like. I just watched this the new Tom Clancy thing without remorse. Oh yeah, with Michael B. Jordan. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Navy Seal. They kill his wife. Right. He spends the whole movie getting revenge. Yeah. I'm like, love it. Yeah, love it. Oh, dude. And you know who like the best at, at those roles are. Mel Gibson. Yes, he is. Because he's Payback. so intense, and you can see the craziness in his eyes. You're just like, okay. <laughs> was it Payback? This is going to be raw, bro. <laughs> was it Payback where all he wanted was like 77 grand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like such a small amount of money. I mean, obviously not for me. Right, I yeah. Would, I would love to have yeah. someone give me 77 sure. grand, but like. Yeah, and the context of what he was doing is like wasn't that much money. Yeah, because I think they brought like more money than they were supposed to. Yeah, and there was there was like, let's just say it was a hundred hundred k. Yeah, and he was like, I only wanted seventy <laughs> seven. <laughs> huh. So you keep the rest; it's fine. So, with that, yeah. we actually have to end this episode. And I'd, I I wanted to say something, and you tell me if you agree. What? Yes. Uh, back I to, do. Back to Patreon. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to ask everybody individually to donate $77,000. <laughs> and if you, you can go do over it, that. You can do it. It's not what we asked for. We do not want 78. No. Or even seventy seven one. Yeah, and we if don't you give us seventy six thousand dollars, you are insulting us, and you need to go away. Yeah, um, it's if you only, come up with seventy six, why couldn't you come yeah. up with the other thousand? So, uh, support us on Patreon for only seventy seven thousand dollars, one single payment. It's all. It's almost it's almost free. It's almost free. <laughs> um, also, this episode is brought to you by Canon Plumbing. Canon. The thing I love about Canon Plumbing. Is he's the best. Right. If There's you think no of, denying that. If you think of someone that does plumbing and yeah. it's not canon, you're like, he's probably good. Right. But he's not the best. Like Liquid Plumber? Who's that guy? I've never even heard of that. He doesn't even come to your house. No. He comes in a bottle. That's it. But Canon Plumbing is the best. He has saved me a ton of money and a ton of stress. Yeah. He saved me a ton of money, ton of stress. Clint McCannon. He's the best. For more information, go to canonplumbingllc.com. So with that, my friend. Yeah. You ready to say bye? We're going to sign off right now. All right. Peace out, guys. Signing off. Have a great week in the Lord. May the force be with all of you. Come on. That is Star Wars. All of you. I'm saying all of you. He's talking about Star Wars. All of you. Bye. May the force be with all of you. Thank you.